the hearts of humanity have always longed for union because it was woven into us. The separation that we have felt no longer has to be our reality. It's time to come home. Time to discover who you truly are. You have been restored to become all that he has created for you to be. Your adventure starts where it all begins. It all begins here. Welcome. Good evening, Eden. Okay, that sounded like a 4.45 a.m. meeting. Good evening, Eden. I think we can do even better. Good evening, Eden. Wonderful to see you here tonight. Welcome to the Eden Conference. Um, it's wonderful to have everybody here. You might be wondering how we decided who was gonna do what tonight. Uh, with regards to pre presentation because we were Bjorn all decked out with the top myself with a cap and so we went for the ugly one with a cap and the well-built one with the top <laughs> if you cast your minds back to the Eden Leadership Connect that we had a couple of weeks back which we call ELK Eden Leadership Conference okay, and, uh, 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 connect we spoke about the four rivers and we spoke about family and the, and the four values that we've got associated with family and we just felt as we move forward with Eden that we would like to kick this off with the values associated with our second river which is harvest guys that's 345 harvest so what we're going to do is tell you the, the first part of the value, exactly what it stands for and why we've landed on it, and then we're going to get you all to repeat it to us. Does that sound good? All right, obviously people have had very, very long days. Caffeine, y'all. We believe that every member is a missionary with a divine opportunity to demonstrate the power of God and share their story of His love. And initially when we were chatting about these things, we spoke about them as tensions. The tension of building the home base versus the tension of going out. And we realized that there was no tension. It was both and. We had to look after the family that God had given us, but we had to go out and grow the family. And so every single person that is a part of Eden has a story. Every single person that is a part of Eden is a missionary. And the exciting thing is that we're not going to be handing out tracts. We're not going to be doing Romans Road. We're not having you read your entire Bible before you're able to go out. Just understand the encounter that you've had with God and go and tell your story to other people. It's God's story through you and it's your testimony. There's power in the testimony. Amen. I'm going to push you all. It's not getting, it's not getting super exciting yet. So I will break it down into little bits. You repeat after me. We believe that every member is a missionary with a divine opportunity to demonstrate the power of God and share their story of His love. You guys are incredible. <laughs> My part of this is the second piece, and we commit to always have an eye for the one. Every time we gather, we create opportunities for people to be changed by the power and love of Jesus Christ. And we really do believe that. Amen. We believe that every opportunity that we gather together is a moment that everyone can encounter Christ and encounter the Holy Spirit and have their life transformed and changed. So if you would, just repeat after me. We commit to always 
having an eye for the one. Every time we gather, we create opportunities for people to be changed by the power and love of Jesus Christ. That was good. Bjorn's obviously got the magic because you guys just jumped into his one, eh? Okay, don't can me. I will try harder. My favorite one of the three. We refuse. There is a process, y'all. We refuse to wait for cities and nations to come to us. No, no, no. I'm going to tell you the whole thing, then I'm going to say a couple of words, then we will explain, we'll repeat off to me. We refuse to wait for cities and nations to come to us. Hallelujah! We will bring the tidal wave of God's kingdom to them. Yeah! Folks, as we talk about harvest, there is a sense amongst many Christians that we will have conversations with people and we will share Christ with people if they happen to cross our paths. And so if we don't have a missionary conversation, if we don't speak to someone and share the gospel, we'll say, well, God obviously didn't want me to do that today. And I'd like to suggest that your biggest problem with that is the Bible. To steal Darren's words there. Folks, we believe that we need to be out just like Jesus, seeking and saving the lost. I had a missionary friend in South Africa who said, until I've shared the gospel, I don't eat supper every day. That was a very, very low wow. But it's a wonderful challenge. We've got the story in us, and so we're going to go out there. We're not going to wait for cities and nations to hear about us. We're going to take it to them. Amen? Now, you're going to repeat it after me. We refuse to wait for cities and nations to come to us. We will bring the tidal wave of God's kingdom to them. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, if you guys would, we're going to get ready to worship tonight. So just stand to your feet and agree with us in prayer as we just enter into the presence of <laughs> the Most High. Father, we thank you that we get to make this transition into Eden and that Eden was ultimately your idea first. This isn't just a good idea, it is a God idea. And Father, I pray <laughs> that all of us would take upon ourselves this mantle of harvest. Father, that we would make it personal, that it would be about bringing sons and daughters back to the Father and back to your original design. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Lord, we just welcome you. Lord, we welcome you in this house, this house of Eden. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship.
Yeah. Yes. I interrupt. <laughs> the, the, the programming for, for a quick commercial. I just wrote a new book. No, I'm just kidding. Um, um, we're doing this whole, like, Eden thing, if you didn't know. Um, and I've been doing a little bit of study on the four rivers of, of Eden. It's, it's absolutely fascinating how these four rivers would go out and water the north, the south, and the east, and the west. In fact, you can actually do the study of it. It's absolutely fascinating. One of the rivers actually um, would go down into Babylon. One of the rivers would actually go into Israel. One of the rivers would actually go into Samaria, and the other river went to America. I, I don't know where the other river. Okay. The point being is that one river came out of Eden, turned into four rivers, and then would begin to water the earth. The reason why this was a big deal is that all the sacred literature would have this account that the world, okay, would receive life and the life-giving waters because of Yahweh Elohim. That the river of God would actually break up and bring forth life into all the other ancient cultures. Okay, good. Where is the garden of God seated today? inside of you where is his throne inside of you guess what's flowing from his throne the river of God and where is that river supposed to go it's supposed to go to the north the south and the east and the west and Josh I believe that even tonight that as we're worshiping that what we do here is not going to be contained here that from our hearts is going to come forth rivers of living water can you just lift up your hands and would you just be willing to open up your gates tonight that the King of Glory would come up and out of us as the people of God. Hallelujah. So we prophesy to the north, the south, and the east, and the west. And we declare to these regions to receive the living waters of God, to receive even the people of God, to receive the good and glorious message of Yeshua, Jesus, the Holy and Anointed One. And Father, we ask tonight as we are gathered together in one accord that there would be a river of living water that comes up and out of this place tonight. Lord, that even out of the Pacific Northwest, that you would water nations, that you would water people. Lord, that this would be a time of refreshing for the church. And tonight, that this would be a time of refreshing. So, hey, just, just reach, reach into your well tonight and just begin to release just begin to release the glory of God. Just, just, just declare to your heart tonight, I open up this well. And we engage the river of God tonight to come up and out of us. Whoa. Lift up your hands, O oh, you gates. Yeah. 
Church, we're just telling how, how beautiful he is. Thank you. 
Come on, let's make some happy noise tonight. Shout out the name of Jesus tonight. Everybody gets to know you. They are going to love you so much. We know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to introduce them to the Father. People are going to be awakened to the fact that, that they're not orphans and that the devil's not their father. People are, people are going to discover that all their sins have been paid for by your precious blood. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Jesus, you're the coolest, you're the most amazing. You're, Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father is through you. And we just declare, you're enough, you're enough, you're enough, you're enough, you're enough, you're enough, you are enough, you are enough. You are more than enough. You are more than enough. Jesus, 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 you are awesome <laughs> in stuff. <laughs> wow. We love you. We love you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Die and, your, and your awesome blood was gathered on the mercy seat, that that big, thick, heavy, weighty veil that separated sinners from the presence of God was torn once and for all. And for the very first time, people could have access to your presence. We thank you that in that upper room, all 120 people in that upper room we're filled with your glorious spirit, with your Holy Spirit. You have made yourself available to us. You've made yourself available to us tonight. We thank you, Lord, that there's no more separation. And we just invite you just to make your home in us. We love you so much. We think you're so cool. You are so awesome. Blow our minds with your goodness. Blow our minds. We give you permission to offend us tonight. Oh, some of us is, yeah. Wow. Even me, even me, and I'm like unoffendable. Lord, you have, you have permission to even offend me tonight, Lord. Oh. Break our boxes tonight, Holy Spirit. Break our boxes. Break our boxes. love endures forever and ever and ever and ever. We love your love. We love your love. We love your love. Oh, we love your love. Come and wreck us tonight with your love, Lord. Come and wreck us tonight with your love. Your love is better than wine. Come and kiss us with the kisses of your mouth. Your love is better than wine. Oh, and your banner over us tonight is love, love, love. Feel the love of God in this place tonight. Yep, 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 yep. Just, just declare this with me right now. Just say, by faith, I just take a big drink. From my father's cup.
just take it right now. Take it right now. Just by faith. You don't have to feel it. Okay? You don't have to be buzzed to get busted. Just hallelujah. Just say by faith. Oh, shekarabamba. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. I receive your love for me right now. I receive your love. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, right now. Just take it right now by faith. Say by faith. Wow, I receive the big drink of Papa's love right now. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Is that good? Yeah? All right, good. Why don't you check up on the person next to you and make sure they're okay? Okay? Give them a sobriety test. Give them a high five. Say, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you, man of God. Bless you. Hey, would, would you guys do me a, a big favor? Can we, can we thank this super amazing Dope Fly worship team for this incredible job that they did tonight? That's so awesome. So good. Josh, my man. Wow. All right. Well, I would like to uh, formally welcome you uh, for, for the very first time officially to Eden. This is, man, this has been such a big, this, I mean, this is a big deal. Tonight is a big deal. And um, our team, our team has been working so hard. You know, how many know that, um, that work was, was not the result of the curse? Okay, that sweat and toil is, is a result of the, of, of, of the curse. But our team has been working in Eden, and they've, they've been, and, and, and I'd love to just go through the, the entire list and just, uh, and just but I, I mean, um, uh, our, what, one of our literal gardeners, we actually have a gardener in Eden, and that is uh, Owen. Is Owen, is Owen around? Where are you, Owen? Everybody's clapping for you, but, oh, you're right there. Everybody, the, gar the, the gardener of Eden, our watchman, Owen. The dude man is like, man, he, uh, uh, working around here like 5 a.m. And then all the way until the sun goes down. And, and dude, you just been, and, I, I, and, he, and he doesn't just work. He like, he worships. You know, so you, you hear him around the building and he's just worshiping Jesus. And, and um, yeah, and then, I, and I just, and, and our, our whole team has been working so hard. So, so unfair just to like pick a few people out. But where's Faith Saruta at? Where's she at? Everybody, that's Faith Saruta back there. Faith, would you wave again? Hey, I just want to celebrate you, Faith. You, you are so amazing. You are such an inspiration uh, to me. Come on. You guys, Faith has been putting in more hours around here than employees of Google. And that's a lot of hours. She's practically been sleeping here. I mean, just everything from our website updates to all of our signage. Man, this is, Faith, we're so proud of you. And, and, and then all of a sudden, you know, and our, our design team and Miss, Miss Jane and Miss Melissa and, 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 and your team to, to make it look like Eden in here. I mean, thank you so, it's beautiful out there with the plants. I mean, just our, just our entire team. Well, well I, I am so proud of you guys. Uh, I am so honored to, just to be a part of the coolest stinking team in the, in the whole world. You know, and I've been in, uh, to many places throughout the world, so I can say that Colum there's a lot of teams, but not like our team. We, we're, we are actually, we're actually the best. We actually have the best team. And so um, if there's other teams out there that want to come here and like tug of war, we, we can, we can we'll, we'll throw it in. Um, guys, this, I, just, this is so cool. I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just so excited. I'm, I'm excited about, I'm excited about tonight. Uh, I, I'm excited that, I mean, all my, all my favorite people are, 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 Ricky's here tonight. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Pastor Angela's here tonight. Come on. I, I, good to see you. God bless you. God bless you. <sighs> Pastor Zach, Pastor Rob are here tonight. Like, these are like the coolest guys in Bellevue. The Reach guys are here. Oh, my gosh. You got, 
yeah, listen, this, this, this might be a little awkward. I don't care. I, I, I can do this all night. Just kind of sit here and tell you about my favorite TV show. I don't even care. No, um, guys, I'm super excited because one of my best friends is here tonight. Richard Gordon is here tonight. <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. DJ King Topher is here tonight. What? What? For the after party, when, when all the bodies are on the floor and we're peeling people up, you're just going to be like, wooka, wooka. He brought his turntables. <laughs> so we, we, we've been dreaming into this thing. And um, some, some of you are, are, don't necessarily know our story. But this church was actually planted in 1955 um, at the uh, firehouse, just literally down the street, a mile and a half down the street. It's called Hazelwood Chapel. It started actually there in, by a guy named Jack Ernst. That was the name of the pastor. And, um, and so the church was growing, and he wanted to buy this property. They didn't actually have the money to buy the property, so they reached out to the Assemblies of God. And the problem is, is that he was actually divorced, okay? And so in order to secure the loan, he would actually have to resign the church that he planted to secure the loan. And, and he did that. He resigned the church, secured the loan. Um, we purchased the property here. And another pastor came in named Roland Carlson. And Roland Carlson would actually end up to be kind of a big deal in the assemblies. And he pastored for a couple of years. And then my grandpa came in, Robert Cecil Stott. And he came in with my grandma. And, and they were pastoring here, just the little chapel there. And then he brought in my mom and dad, okay, and, and they came in, and they started the children's ministry. So my, my parents were like the children's pastors. And the children's ministry out, outgrew the, the adult services. And so anyways, we were, we were um, Hazelwood Chapel, and then we were Berean Assembly. And then uh, underneath my mom and dad, they changed the name to Lake Bourne Christian Center. They pastored the church for about 25 years, and then they got burned out, okay, and they were like, we're, we're done. We're going to leave the ministry. My dad was actually quite successful in sales, and we're just going to get horses and a ranch and forget all this church stuff. And my grandpa said, I'll, I hear there's a move of God in Toronto. I will pay your way if you'll go to Toronto. And so my dad said, okay. So he went to Toronto. My dad was an was a assemblies God, three-piece suit guy, okay, um, really quite British. And my dad goes to Toronto, and the lightnings of God hit him. And that's not a metaphor. And he called us uh, from Toronto, my mom and I, and he couldn't talk. He literally was going, Zzzz. it was really, it was really, it was scary and frightening and whatever else. And he came back from from from, from Toronto, and all of a sudden, uh, three churches started coming together to form what would be called Seattle Revival Center. And we were Lakebourne Christian Center that entire time during the '90s. Awesome, wild, crazy move of God. Back before revival was sexy, okay? <laughs> I mean, nowadays, even, even the Baptists sing Bethel songs, you know what I'm saying? This is way back when shaking would get you crucified, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so anyways, <laughs> um, mighty move of God. And then that came to an end, and some stuff happened, and some, some stuff happened, and my parents ended up going through actually a divorce during, during that time. And this church, which was a vibrant move, thing went down to less than 20 people and so we almost we almost lost this this place so then there was another name change the denomination brought in a, a pastor and they changed the name to new beginnings because th that's what you name a church when it's been through something tragic right it's like you can't <laughs> anytime you go to a church called new beginnings you just ask what happened here okay um, <laughs> it's like because well, you can't name a church starting over, right? <laughs> right? So they changed the name to New Beginnings, and that didn't really work out very well, okay? And then um, there was a gal who was saved underneath my grandpa's ministry, okay? Discipled by my parents. Uh, her name is, is Pastor Gail, and she was in Australia <laughs> doing youth revival in Australia, and, um, and God spoke to her and said, I'm not, I'm not done there yet. I have a harvest in store. So she wrote a letter um, to the elders and said, I believe God has called me to be a pastor. Pastor Gail came back in 2000 and changed the name from New Beginnings to Seattle Revival Center. And for the very first time, Seattle Revival Center would be a local church. And she employed the help of 
Pastor Greg Daly, who would be a, who was here tonight. Pastor Greg, wave, wave to everybody. And Keith Webb, who would come here all the way from Canada to be a part of Pastor Gail's dream team. Pastor Keith is here tonight. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> a lot of people think that Pastor Keith came here for the job. <laughs> that, that was part of it. But he actually came here uh, to marry my mom. <laughs> so he's actually my, my stepdad, okay? All right. And these guys, these three guys came and they began repenting for stuff that they, they didn't even do. I want nothing to do with this place, okay? I, I told people I would never, I'll, I will never go back there. Um, I was so kind of broken, and then that brokenness turned to bitterness. I was just done with the church, man. I was, I was, I, I, I hated, I, <laughs> you know, I was just thinking done. And uh, Pastor Gail and Pastor Greg asked if I would meet with them. I just did it out of respect. I, I didn't actually want to meet with them. And I told my mom, I know what they're going to do, and I ain't going back there, Okay. And they brought me into their office, and, 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 they, and they just began apologizing. They just began repenting. And I said, I don't, I don't understand. You guys haven't done anything to me. And Pastor Gail said, uh, it doesn't matter. Somebody needs to stand in the gap. So will you forgive me? She wasn't going to let me up. And I said, you know, fine. Yes, I forgive you. And the reason why that was a big deal is because I hadn't forgiven anybody up to that point. And uh, I didn't mean it, <laughs> but I said it. And that's the problem with words. Words open realms. We're at where we're at tonight because of the words we've spoken and the words that have been spoken over us. I tell people, she set me up. I didn't want to come back here, but once I forgave her, the Lord actually came and he gave me a dream and I was back here and I was leading worship and I was singing this song that I'd never sung before. And in the dream, I was so euphoric. I was so like, wow, that the Lord actually used the dream to put hope back in my heart. Hope for this church, hope for the church, hope for me. I, I saw myself working with the church in the thing and wow. And the reason why I bring all of that up is because we've had many names. I wanted to kind of catch you up on, on, on our story, on our history. We've had many names. We've had many pastors. But we've always been a church planted by God in this location. And guess what? On the real estate maps, this location is called Eden. So this green belt that goes from here all the way down to Lake Washington is called C.D. Hillman's Garden of Eden. Yeah. So... Check this out. In 1955, in Eden, God planted a literal church. And it would have many names and many pastors, but it would always have the same DNA. And the DNA will be expressed differently from generation to generation. But you can mark me on this. That no matter who pastors here, no matter what this church is called in the future, that when you cut this place, it will always bleed the love of the Father. That we believe that the bloodline, you can take it all the way back to the original uh, mission statement of the church, which is so crazy. Because none of us knew this. The original mission statement of this church is, you are loved in the Father's house. Before there were computers, the very first thing that Pastor Gail did when she began pastoring this place is she took the 20 people. She goes, I don't care if we have two people. We're meeting in the sanctuary because they're meeting in the chapel. And they put up a banner over the doors and it says, you are loved. I asked Pastor Gail, I said, why did you put up a banner that says you are loved over the door? She goes, when I was in Australia, a prophet looked at me and said, every time I look at you, I see a banner over your head that says you are loved. And I just figured if in the spirit I have a banner over my head that says you are loved, then every person in this church should have a, a literal banner over their head that says you are loved. And so, yeah, the name changes are interesting. All the different pastors, that's kind of interesting, Right. The you are loved thing is, is, is definitely interesting. But j j just know this. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you've been through. I don't know if you're at tonight where I w once was where you're just like, man, I'm just done with, the whole, done with the whole thing, right? But let me just declare this over you tonight. The kingdom of God, you might be done with the kingdom. But the kingdom is not done with you. And that your hurt might be really, really big, but it's not bigger than his love for you. 
God loves you and has such an incredible plan for your life. He's going to love you. He's going to restore you. He's going to restore everything that Satan thought that he stole from you. Listen, my friend, you, you, are, you are born for the most exciting time in, in human history. We are about to see the most crazy stuff that eyes have ever seen. It, it, it's about to get really wild. You're, you're, you're about to be running to cities. You're about to be running to nations. You're, you're going to be healing the sick with your own hands. You're, you're going to be seeing blind eyes open. You're going to see people that said that they were atheists beginning to confess Jesus as their, as their, as their Lord and King. And listen, here, here's the deal, man. I'm not talking about the person sitting next to you. I'm talking, I'm talking about you. So for those of you that are like, I'm done with the church. I'm done with the kingdom. I'm done with Christians. God's not done with you. He's going to capture you. He's going to wreck you. He's going to restore you. He's going to use you to bring restoration to cities and nations. Hallelujah. So listen, thank you for, uh, for being a part of tonight. Thank you for, for, for working this weekend into your schedule. And know that this has very little to do with positioning and organization for significant growth. And this has everything to do with positioning a people to reach cities and nations for the glory of God. Even if, even if, our, if our amazing, super cool logo isn't at the center of it. We want Jesus to be at the center of it. Is that good? Is that good? So I believe that this weekend you're going to get positioned. Your identity is going to get awakened. You're going to get filled up. That disappointment's going to get displaced, that when it's all said and done, you're going to say, I know that God has created me for such a time as this. It's time to arise. It's time to shine. It's time to give glory to God. Is that good? All right. I love you. Just look at the person next to you and say, you are absolutely, unquestionably loved by God. That's the truth. You are loved. Absolutely. Well, listen, I'm going, to get, I'm going to get Richard up here in a second. Um, but before we do, guys, we're actually going to receive our very first offering as Eden. This is the very first. Look at I haven't even seen. Look at it's so It's so clean. That's so great. Um, and so here's, here's how we give here. Um, there's golden bowls here if you, if you want to give with um, uh, cash or check. Um, if you've got, like, duffel bags full of cash out in your trunk, you can go and get them now if you want and, and fill up a bowl. We can, get, we can get more bulls if we need to. Uh, if you want to give with credit card or debit card, you can text to, text to give. Um, that'll, be, that'll be good. And I'm going to bless you here in, in just a sec. Um, but tonight, as we give, I want us to give into the harvest. And here's what I mean by that. I want us to give into this river, into this value that will hold us accountable to not become... American consumers within our faith, where we believe that all revelation and all equipping exists to make us feel better about ourselves. And let's allow for the Great Commission to hold us accountable tonight. And let's believe that we actually have an incredible mission over our families, over our lives. And the mission is to go ye into all the world and make disciples. It's so easy to forget, right? It's so easy to forget. And, um, and so let's believe... In fact, just go and close your eyes and just say, Lord, thank you that you have commissioned my family and I, wow, to go into all the world and to make disciples. And Jesus, we say yes. I make myself available to be a missionary of this incredibly good news. Father, would you open my eyes to my family and I in the nations bringing the good news. Just let them open your eyes right now. See your children. See your grandchildren. Some of you are not even married yet. It don't matter. Hallelujah. And let's just respond to the Lord. Jesus, we say yes. We say yes to this great commission. We will go. We will bring this great and glorious message. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. In Jesus' name, everybody said. 
Amen. Hey, God bless you as you give tonight. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our first Eden Conference. Night one tonight with Richard Gordon. It's going to be amazing. I'm here to share just three brief announcements looking ahead to this weekend that you're not going to want to miss. First of all, tomorrow at 11 a.m., we're having our very first family day. We're going to be transforming the sanctuary into a place of games, activities, food. If you have kids, you're not going to want to miss this. And at 1 p.m., we're going to have an incredible dance party set from DJ King Topher himself. Tomorrow night, we're going to have a ribbon cutting ceremony here in the sanctuary. And we're going to be joined by the mayor of Newcastle as well. Bonnie Shock is going to be bringing the word on family. It's going to be a powerful time. It's such an important value as we step into this new season as a church. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to check out our merch table out in the foyer. It's going to be an amazing time. I'll see you guys later. Awesome. It's me again. <laughs> it's him again. Gosh. All right. Uh, yeah, we are in for such a, such a sweet treat tonight. Um, uh, Richard was right in the middle of an amazing conference in Reading. Is it the Open Heavens uh, Conference? Is that the name of it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I reached out to him. I was like, because this wasn't part of the plan. I was like, Richard, hey, bro, would you be a part of our of our launching of, of Eden. And, and he, he ministered this afternoon at that conference, and then he jumped on the airplane to fly here to be a part of tonight. And then tonight at like midnight, he's jumping back on a plane to fly back to Reading so he can get back into the conference tomorrow morning. Isn't that amazing? Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, 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 he, and why? Why would he do that? Like, that's crazy. I don't know any other speaker or any other person. I wouldn't even do that. For you, I would. Well, who, who does that? Um, Richard Gordon does that. Why? Because he loves you. Because he loves this region. Because he believes in what Jesus is doing in the Pacific Northwest. And Richard, we love you too. Would you celebrate what Jesus is doing through the life of ministry of Richard Gordon? Let's go. This was water. And then I prayed for it during worship. Interesting. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> you would. You would come back. You would come for me. If oh, I asked you, you'd come. In a second. In a second. A, this is a special moment. Turn to someone next to you and say, this is a moment. <laughs> it is. This is. You're part of history, right? Yeah. This is a moment. Turn to someone next to you and say, I'm excited about the future. Turn to someone next to you and say, God's doing something in your life tonight. Why don't you with faith tell the person next to you, I'm going to get so touched by God tonight. <laughs> Just tap them and say, you're going to have to carry me home. <laughs> oh. Why don't you look at this carpet over here, this carpet that carries revival. And why don't you say this off to me, carpet, we're going to be friends today. <laughs> Oh man, one touch, one touch and your life can be changed. Uh, Jesus of Nazareth arrives in Cana of Galilee. It's a wedding. 
It's a wedding where Jesus is, his mother is, and a set of disciples are. It's a celebration. It's a moment. They're celebrating a new beginning. And amongst the celebration, the wine runs out. Turn someone next to you and say, the wine's run out. In Jewish culture, it was the bridegroom that provided and paid for the wine. In Jewish culture, it was the bridegroom that made available the wine. And Jesus' mother turns to Jesus and says, you know, what what are you going to do about this? The wine's run out. This was the unveiling of the Christ. This was the moments that unveiled the Christ. And Jesus responds to her, says, Woman, it is not my hour. In the narrative of the gospel is often found a second narrative. And as you start to read the New Testament, there's a layered story. There's a story of the old, often that of Eden. There's a story of that moment, and there's a story where you're also in. It's this layered story where God says, I value what was, I value what is happening, and I value what is coming. to study it a little more and say, what was that about? Why would Jesus call his mother woman? Hey, this is a perfect son, but it almost feels rude. Woman. You know, I'm blown away. Do you know what the first words that came out of Jesus' mouth when he was raised from the dead? He was in a garden and he said, woman, it's me. This moment was a new beginnings moment. And he starts off and he says, woman, I don't fully understand it, but I know if I look through the story of the gospel, that women are the birthing place of new beginnings. And I look at Gail, and why don't you stand, Gail? And Gail. (laughs) Yes! today there was a woman that was part of a large piece of the 60 plus year story and there was a woman that sat in Australia and said God's not done with that church and she sent a letter and in an age of the church which was more of the man's world this woman stood up and said no, we're taking the kingdom. And you stand here today at the brink of another new hour. And you stand in the front row. You know, when I was here last, it was a few times ago, I didn't know the depth of Gail's story. And, I rem- and then I started to hear the, the details of her story. I went to look for her and I couldn't find her. And do you know where she was? She was in the kitchen washing dishes. The the woman that came in this church was 20 strong 
and she prophetically went to person after person repenting for how the church had hurt them. And she took on the wounds that were, and she birthed something. I, I don't know how many children you have. I don't know how many grandchildren you have, but this right here, this right here, you birthed something. And uh, on behalf of everyone here and probably legacy, I just, I feel like heaven just says thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, she was washing dishes downstairs. Crazy. I remember going into the kitchen downstairs and be like, I see Jesus and Gail. I see Jesus and Gail's eyes. Well, why do I, I highlight stories like this? Why did Darren highlight stories like this? Because it's the stories that God writes in this church, the origin stories that define who this church is. This will be a place where powerful women will be raised up and released into, where women are given a grace and space to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. It's one of the origin stories of this place. Beautiful. And so Jesus says to her, woman, it's not my hour. When he was referring to hour, he was referring to actually, as actually prophesying about something else. Jesus was the second Adam. But there was a first Adam with another woman. And uh, the first Adam, there was a woman that disobeyed. And when Mary says, when Jesus says to her, she says, woman, it is not my hour. Mary, his mother does not respond in disobedience. His mother responds in obedience. And he said, she says to the servants, do whatever he says. And that act of obedience through a woman ushered in the revealing of Jesus. Where Jesus said, woman, and in doing so, ushered in a new age, a new move of the Spirit of God. And so Jesus' response to her going, do whatever he says, he tells the servants, go to those ceremonial jars, those six jars that are for purification, a symbol of religion. And he says, fill them to the brim with water. Fill them to the brim with water. And so they take a picture and they draw from the jar and then they walk and they give it to the master servant. And as they start to pour that liquid out of the pitcher, out comes wine. And the master servant is so shocked wine and was the wine provider. And he says to the husband, he said, why have you saved the best one? The best one for lost. And in John chapter 2, verse 11, it says, What Jesus did at Cana of Galilee was the beginning, the first of the signs that revealed his glory and his disciples believed. Turn to someone next to you and say, beginning. We are here at a new beginning. You know, when the church was renamed years ago to New Beginning, it was a painful moment. And Gail came in and she honored the legacy of the past and she didn't say we're just doing a new thing and throwing away the past. No, we're honoring the legacy of the past as we step into a new thing. I think it's humorous and almost like a signature from God on a painting that where the name of New Beginnings 
dwindled the church down to 20, that you come at another intersection of your timeline and essentially your name is New Beginnings again. <laughs> it's like God is just writing, it's just like signature on the painting. Just like, <laughs> aha. <laughs> everything, everything from, you know, the region from called Eden, everything. It's the, and this started to make me think about the new beginning started with signs and wonders. The first half of the book of John, they call the book of signs and wonders. There were seven signs and wonders that reveal Jesus as Messiah. The second half of the book of John is called the book of glory which is the glorification of the Christ, the death, the resurrection, the ascension, and the glorification. And I started to read the second miracle, and in John chapter four, uh, Jesus, there's a nobleman that's asking Jesus to heal his son. And Jesus responds saying, if you don't see signs and wonders, how will you believe? I always thought it was a frustrated Jesus going like oh you guys like you have to see the greatest things and then you'll only believe man. if you don't see signs and wonders oh, how will you believe I always thought it was a frustrated Jesus for the faithless people and uh, I realized no this was Jesus's method for a harvest unless you see signs and wonders, how will you believe? And I started to realize the way that God chose to reveal His Son as Messiah was through signs and wonders. He was born of a virgin, named through a dream, Revealed by one, resurrected from a tomb, ascended on a cloud, man enough to spit, and God enough to heal the blind, man enough to eat fish with them, but God enough to walk through a wall to be with them, man enough to get tired and cry but God enough to calm a storm and to walk on water. The whole way, the medium and the method which God chose to reveal himself to humanity was through signs and wonders. It's not an addition to the gospel of salvation. It is the gospel of salvation unless you see signs and wonders how will you believe turn to someone next to you and say this is a church of signs and wonders (laughs) it's wild eh it's not a secondary piece of the gospel method and methodology (laughs) I believe that there will be many signs and wonders that happen in this place do you know what I love about what Pastor Gail did she essentially said this When the church changed its name to New Beginnings and started to go a more seeker-sensitive route, she essentially said, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for all that believe unto salvation. And what she did is she took the old and she said, we're not ashamed of the power 
in this place. At Bethel Church, we are in a time where we are dreaming and thinking about transition. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, when Paul the Apostle presented the new, the, the gospel, Paul the Apostle took the old covenant and, and he presented the old and the new at the same time. And when Jesus Christ came to present the gospel, he came and he took the old and he presented the new. And I want to say it in the spirit and I want to say it to the leadership and I want to say it to this church. I believe that you are to honor the old so much, to honor the fire that was in this place, that to honor the signs and wonders, grace and the spirit of revival in this place. You know what I love? I love the names changed, but I asked Darren, what was his hope for tonight? He said, that people be peeled off the ground. And I'm like, come on. Like he said, it may be a name change, but you cut this place, and this place bleeds Jesus. This place bleeds Jesus. And at a wedding, he revealed himself as Messiah, a God of signs and wonders, and a new hour opened up, which was the hour of signs and wonders, in which is I believe we are in today. I want to just touch on what this church has meant to me. Uh, it was on this stage, in this church, was the first invitation I ever got to preach anywhere in America. It was... It was nine years ago. I was hanging out with a friend of mine who became quite controversial later on. And I, Darren saw something in me and he said there was a love inside this young man and I really like him. And he invited me to come back and minister at his church. And I thought, this guy doesn't know me. This guy's crazy. <laughs> He's crazy. And I was a young man, and he invited me to come, and I came here, and he probably didn't know this, but I had been very hurt by the church. And he came here, he believed in me, and he created space for me, and it was in this house that I really got healed in many ways. Uh, you guys think that I'm a, uh, a visitor from Bethel. You know, it was in this house that actually this pastor saw something inside of me and created space and believed in me and said, there's a call of God, there's a gift in your life, I wanna make space for that. Before the leaders at Bethel, and um, he, he's been one of the most significant voices in my walk with God while I've been in America. He may be going like, oh, you, he always says, oh, you always say that. I promise you, the way that you and your family have chosen me, created space for me, and believed in me, and seen something in me, it's changed the way I see myself. It's, it felt like almost, uh, you ushering me into a new hour and you know so when he asked me like would you got would you come I'm like of course I will come this is like my family these are my people here these are my people <laughs> like to be part of the beginning of something new to be in an intersection between water and wine to be here at a moment such as this. I remember before the apple wine move here. I remember driving up, and we're gonna get a little crazy, I hope that's fine. I remember driving up to this church, it was, I can't remember if it was the first or the second time, I think it was, I feel like it's like the first, and I was driving up and I had an encounter in my, 
a little 2002 Honda Accord. And Bob Jones popped up in front of me. And he said to me, I was going to meet a man by the name of Bobby Connor there. I knew who Bobby was. And that I was to tell him uh, the certain number. And then the, the vision switched. And I went into this like trance. And I saw over the doorway gates of first love. And I saw myself walking into the sanctuary. And as I walked into the sanctuary, I saw, uh, it was my first time here actually, I saw uh, just all the swirl and swirl and people getting sent around all the nations and getting flicked and flung all over. And I remember I got here, I remember walking through and I got to those doors and above Gail had placed a plaque, a banner, saying first love, gates of first love. And I'm like, no way. I hear God. <laughs> You're like, Whoa. And I came in here and I remember seeing in the spirit the swirl. And it was a couple days later when, oh, thank you, Jesus. That guy at the back over there uh, with baldish, raise your hand quickly. Yeah, yeah, uh, just in front. Yeah, yeah, that guy there. Can you see me? Lift. Yeah, yeah, raise your hand. God's on you. I remember praying for you right over here. How many years ago was that? Five years ago? Five years ago and seeing you radically touched by God right over here, screaming at the top of your lungs as God touched you and your heart and you're getting radically set free. You're an amazing, I haven't seen you in years. God loves you, man. God loves you. God loves you. That was a wild night. <laughs> uh, and so I remember Charlie Shamp came that weekend and started this. And it was like, I think uh, this move just happened. And then for, I don't know if it was 100 days or 150 days or whatever you guys did. You guys are crazy. And I remember da uh, Darren calling me. He phoned me while I was in Reading and he said, Rich, it's happening. This move, this revival move's happening. But I'm nervous because of what happened, and he shared today, so I can say, I'm nervous because of what happened when the revival was happening with my parents. I'm nervous what ended up happening to my dad and my mom. Just what should I do? And I'm sitting at the back, I'm like, Darren is just the most humble man. I'm like, and he's talking to me like, like you know, like I'm, a, I'm his older brother. And I remember just praying and saying, I think this is a God story. He's rewriting and redeeming a story. And started this apple wine move, which in many ways made this church well known, not just in the natural, but in the spirit realm. It restored something of that of the 90s, where this was the literal hub of revival in the Pacific Northwest region. This room was like the room to be in. From Bill Johnson to who's who in the Christian zoo would come through here because there was a move of the Spirit happening in this place. And the faith and the courage of a man that stood in front of fear, he said, no, I'm going to choose a redemption story. And again, in the Spirit, it restored something of what Gail was dreaming of. Boom! And I remember coming here and being, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm the wild guy from the wild church in Reading. I'm not the wilder of them. And I remember coming here and being almost offended. <laughs> you guys stepped again from a water into a wine moment. You stepped again into another transition. And I believe that this is another one of those. Uh, I don't take this moment lightly. This is the first time a preacher's preaching at the new naming of the event. And I felt it was prophetic that I was to say that it's all about signs and wonders. That the way Jesus revealed himself was through signs 
and wonders right over there and she fell to the ground and started shaking in all her braces and it was about 10 15 minutes later I'm standing on the chair over there singing at the top of my lungs all my life you have been faithful because this woman who was in braces with a rare disease ran for the first time in years and years around this church around this church I remember Lisa was there, we were standing right next to her, and Lisa said to me, Rich, she has the same disease. So, <laughs> and we pray for her, and boom, she gets radically healed. You know, when I was at Open Heavens yesterday, I preached, and I got Alyssa up with me on the Bethel stage, and we preached, I preached on signs and wonders. And then I handed her the mic and she started to share her story of what happened in Seattle Revival Center. This is a church of signs and wonders. Bill Johnson came to me afterwards and he hugged me and he said, that is one of the most beautiful stories ever. I wanna say what's happening here will touch the nation will touch the nations. There is a harvest waiting to be harvested and turned into wine. There is a people that are waiting, literal grapes, sitting, waiting to be picked and squished and turned into wine. Turn to someone next to you and say, squish me, God. <laughs> crazy. It was in this church that Darren kept inviting me back every year. And I came back every year and every year I grew. And every year that, and he introduced me to friends and he introduced me like a king. And it, honestly, it was in this church that I feel like I went from water to wine, from hidden to king. It was in this church and under the leadership of the Patties and the Sandys and the Keiths that became fathers and mothers to me that saw something inside of me whenever I would come here, Darren, I'd be like, I'm home. <laughs> and their love for me pulled something great out of me. It was like the love of this church, and that's you guys. Jeanette, I remember Jeanette shouting at me because I wouldn't reply to her texts and her emails. <laughs> she was like, I remember Darren saying to me, it's harder to get hold of you than Bobby Connor, man. I remember them fathering and mothering me, but it was in this church that the love, their love pulled greatness out of me. I believe this is a beautiful church that people will come in with potential and that will be totally unlocked because of the community and love that is here. I believe this church will take water and turn it to wine. I believe this church will take your life and absolutely transform your life. It's changed my life. This church, and I would not say that about my life and my personal ministry. And uh, I wanna ask you, you know, in this change from water to wine, I wanna ask you, would you embrace and love this church and its history? Love the leaders and love the people and honor the past and charge forward to the future. This is a beautiful church. Yeah. Turn to someone next to you and say, I'm so glad you're here. Darren, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. I remember singing Coldplay with you right over here. Uh, I love you and you've changed my life. Uh, your leadership has changed my life. Your friendship has changed my life. And this feels such a privilege to be here. Um, turn to someone next to you and say, I believe many signs and wonders will happen in this church.
I just got back from Brazil just recently, and uh, it's my first time going to Brazil, and I never imagined. I saw more signs and wonders uh, than probably in that short amount of time than, I don't know, years. And I believe God is doing something. Uh, I got multiple tumors. There was uh, ladies with lumps on their breasts and just in the glory of God, just in the glory. No, no hands laid upon the breast. No hands laid. Just in the glory of God, tumors just dissolving. Boom, 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 boom. And there was, in the glory, there was this guy, he, uh, he felt a little bit uncomfortable, so he goes to the bathroom, and while he's in the bathroom, he passes a kidney stone with no pain. No pain. Doctors say that it's impossible, it shreds your urethra, and he said, they say it's impossible to pass a kidney stone without pain, especially your first one. And he comes out with this kidney stone. The third meeting, the same thing happened with another person. In the glory, they go, and suddenly they pass a kidney stone, no pain. There was a lady that got wheeled in with leukemia. She had been diagnosed, and she came in in a wheelchair, and she came in with very little um, like energy in her body. And in the glory of God, she suddenly starts running around, jumping, doing all the things. And so we ask, she comes up to the front and she, we, she starts sharing, you know, what God did. And I don't know. And she said, you know, last week I had a blood transfusion. And for the first time, I, the pain was gone and I had energy. And, uh, and what um, God, uh, and tonight, I feels like I had a blood transfusion again. All the pain is gone and I can, and I can move around. She had a growth on her stomach that came out this far. And what happened was that it totally went down. And I said, is there someone here that's known her for five years or longer, come up. So this person comes up and it's the husband and he's crying because the growth's not there. And so a week later, I get a text from her and she says, the doctor just responded and said, I don't know what happened to you, but your blood is 95% clear of cancer. And Two weeks later, I get a text from her again. The doctor can't explain it, but I am 100% cured of leukemia. Don't someone say water to wine. There was a man that came to the meeting. He had a heart stint that was put in and he had 40% of his heart capacity. He came to the meeting, his wife convinced him to come and prayed for him. Just before the, prayed for him, she was one of our students in, in uh, Brazil. We have a school in Brazil online. And just at, before he comes to the meeting, he goes for a checkup. He's had this stint in for 10 years. He goes for the checkup and the doctor can't find the stint. So the doctor checks again and he checks again. He checks six times because this is his doctor that he's been seeing. And he says, I can't explain it, so let's test your heart capacity. He tests his heart capacity, and his heart capacity is 100%. So they've taken his case, and they've taken it into a medical research study, because the, the, M, the medical research uh, um, that research a lot of these miracles, they haven't been able to prove a metal melting miracle. Often, like they'll, like a Randy Clark or a Katie Souza, they'll get full movement back, but when they test, they'll still find like some metal there. And so they say this may be one of the very first ones that this medical research institute, MRI something, have discovered, and they're in the midst of it right now. There was a uh, guy that was watching online. If you're watching online, there was a guy watching online and he's sitting in bed with his wife and suddenly while he's watching online, uh, he starts to smell cinnamon. He had lost his smell for two years. 
and he starts to smell cinnamon suddenly. And he turns to his wife and he says, can you smell that? And she's like, what? He says, cinnamon. He said, I've been burning cinnamon candles for the last year at our house. And he says, well, I can smell it. <laughs> and then he, uh, I tell people, put your hand on a place where there's pain. And so he puts his hand on his knee. He was due for a knee operation at the end of the week. And so he puts his hand, it suddenly gets hot and all the pain goes. He gets so excited that he's watching the stream. He jumps in his car and him and his wife drive 40 minutes to the meeting. And uh, he arrives in his pajamas, so excited. And he comes up to me, he says, I need to share the story. And I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> And he jumps up on his pajamas and he starts to share about his smell getting healed and his uh, knee getting healed. I get a message from him a week later. He goes in for his operation. The doctor looks at the knee and says, I don't know what happened to you, but we don't have to operate anymore. There was this lady that came and she had no cartilage in her knee from a surgery. And she comes up and she's just jumping up and down, up and down, up and down. And I'm like, why is this? And she says, I have no cartilage in my knee. I said, so I'm an engineer. So you guys, a lot of you know me. So I've got an engineering background. I'm an analytical scientific kind of guy. So I'm like, really? No cartilage? And I, you have cartilage? So I'm like, bring your knee here. Let me feel. And so she said it was bone on bone. You could feel the cracking. I put my hand on her knee and I feel cartilage. She starts moving her knee and I can feel the cartilage in her knee. Turn to someone next to you and say, water to wine. <laughs> water to wine. Water to wine. I was telling these stories, I was just verbally telling these stories to a group online and I said to them, if you have any pain in your body, put your hand on your stomach, Jesus, put your hand where the pain is, Jesus wants to heal you. There was a lady that had not had a period for two years. Her cycles had been out. Two years, she placed her hand on her stomach, a fire starts to come upon her. She was due to have a ovarian cyst removed uh, later that week, a large one. The very next morning, she has her first period in two years and she goes do you know what i love about signs and wonders it is the medium that god chose to reveal his son is the messiah it's so exciting because it tells me the king is not dead the king is alive this is his method of evangelism. This is his method that they would believe. He said that this was the first son that would reveal his glory and his disciples believed. And in John 4, it was, unless they see signs and wonders, how will they believe? I see a move of evangelism that would come from the stories told from this place and this house that people would say I heard of a place that I could come and my pain would leave my body I heard of an Eden that I would come to a place that was like a heaven on earth where then I would get to and there'd be an atmospheric glory that would sickness would stop to dwell on bodies that eczema and skin disease would start to just leave people that heart trauma and heart pain would come upon off people that young men that did not believe in their call to the church would come in here and they would see a grace gift come out of them i'm talking about myself because i came here that there'd be an eden that people would walk to and there'd be miracles in this place I believe the Lord wants to touch people radically today. So, uh, why don't you, just you can pause the keys. And... Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I thank you.
for the legacy of this church. And I thank I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you and let it be a sweet, sweet sound. Let it be a sweet, a sweet sound. To your ears, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice, my voice to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, you're the one maker, take joy, my king, squish the scrape, and in what you see let it be a sweet sweet sound in your is take joy my king take joy my king in what you Let this be a sweet, a sweet sound in your ear. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you. Oh, you're the one maker. And I lift my voice. You paid for all the wine. Worship you, oh my soul, in what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound, let it be a sweet, a sweet And let it be a sweet, a sweet sound to your ears. Holy Spirit, we've spoken about a church going from water to wine. We've spoken about a moment going water to wine. But God, there are people here. And it's people that you chose to fill with your wine. It's not structures like the old, it's people, God. Your people are your resting place. Your people are the place where you say, that's where I will dwell. It's not a building, it's not a movement, it's a people, God. And the people in this place is the resting place of the Holy Ghost. God, you're going to take people from water to wine moments today, from hidden to king, from hidden to queen moments today. God, I thank you that you took a Darren that didn't want to be part of the church and he said, watch, this water will become wine. That you took a Gale in Australia and you said, watch, this water will become wine. That you took a church called 
new beginnings and you turned it into an Eden. You said this water will become wine, God. Thank you, Jesus, for every seat and every person. God says to you, there's a new beginnings. I'm taking your water and I'm turning it to wine. I'm taking your water and I'm turning it to wine. Holy Spirit, it was me. I got touched once and my whole life got changed because of the fire of God. I got dragged to a prophetic crazy meeting just like this. And a man prayed and he said, I release a mantle for signs and wonders. And as he did that, I fell back two rows of chairs and took out a section of people and two grannies. I have a granny minister. Ministry. And I went into my first encounter and it shook under the glory and the fire of God. And for seven hours I shook and I shook and God activated an identity inside of me. And for the next seven days I shook under the power of God. And God did something. He took water and He turned it to wine. And if you were just sitting here today watching a church go from a new beginnings moment and you would say, God, I need a water to wine moment. If you would say, Rich, I'm in for it. I want you to stand to your feet as quickly as you possibly can. Holy Spirit, not just another meeting. Not just another meeting. I've had so many and they get boring. God, I'm asking for a life to be changed. I'm asking for the impossible, God. I'm not asking emotions to be stirred. I'm asking that the miracle maker, the signs and wonder bridegroom, the one that provides, pays for, and makes the wine would squash his grapes today. That he would take and pluck and pick and squash them and turn them into a miracle working wonder kings and queens God God I thank you just lift your hands in this place Holy Spirit I ask that your fire would rest upon this church on this day in the significant transition moment that a fresh grace God they've had the season of apple wine I thank you for the wine of signs and wonders that would come upon this place God I pray that that your glory would rest on hands and hearts. It's one encounter that will set the trajectory of your life. It's one encounter that touched Alyssa in the corner there that sent her. Now she's a packer at Costco, 15,000 steps a day. God, it's one encounter that touched me and launched me, God. I'm asking God for a fresh touch from heaven. A fresh touch from heaven. Oh, Holy Spirit. And if you would say, Rich, I feel a fire on me right now. I feel a fire on me right now. I want you to rush the front as quickly as you can. Quickly as you can. Holy Spirit, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for the fire right now resting upon a people. If I could have a couple catches with me. Holy Spirit, I thank you for a glory resting upon the people right now. God, I thank you that at the mark of a transition water to wine moment, that you would baptize your people afresh with fire. Afresh with fire. Could I have some catches come very quickly with me? Holy Ghost, we just thank you. We thank you for what you're doing. And could you play just Yeshua for me? Could we just thank you for what you're doing? Could uh, Michaela and Sean and come up here quickly? Thank you, God. The fire of God upon it. The fire of God upon it. The fire of God upon it. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your fire. We thank you for your fire in this place. We thank you for your fire in this place. Holy Spirit. Oh. My friend there, yeah, with the bald head. Sorry if I'm calling out your head, but come up here quickly. Big man, big man, come here. Yes, and Rob, I heard you're a pastor. Come up here quickly. Yeah, come here quickly. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your grace and your glory here, God. Your grace and your glory here, God. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. Mary, the fire of God on you right now. The fire of God upon you, right? You gotta catch it quicker than that. The fire of God on you, Jane. The fire of God upon you right now. The fire of God, the fire of God, the fire of God. Fire.
fire of God in this place. Yes. What's this lady's name over here? What's your name? Nadia. Nadia, open your hands. Nadia, are you? Oh, the fire of God in the Slavic people. Holy Spirit, we thank you for Nadia right now. I ask God that you would mark her life. That you'd mark her life. We ask for a water to wine moment, God. We ask for the glory of God to come upon her. God, that your fire would rest on her head and her heart. Baptize her afresh right now. Baptize her afresh right now. Pour out your fire in this place. Turn to someone next to you and say, Jesus loves you. (laughs) Oh, do that with me. Turn to someone next to you and say, Jesus loves you. Oh. Fire right now, God. Fire on Nadia right now. Fire, God. Fire, God. Fire of God, Rachel. The fire of God, Rachel. The fire of God, Rachel. Holy Ghost. Pray for me. Yes, God. Yes, God. Everyone, just keep your hands open. Yes, God. Yes, God. Where's Angela? Come here. Come on. Yes, God. Just keep your hearts, all affection on the Christ. All the affection on the Christ. All the affection on the Christ. Are you supposed to pray for me? <laughs> I think he's supposed to pray for me. Oil, 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 your eyes, lift your hands.
sing that? Yeah, yeah. someone next to you and just say fire <laughs> put a hand on someone next to you and say you're a grape squish them God <laughs> put a hand on someone next to you and say upon it right now. God, would you baptize her afresh? Someone put your hand on her stomach right now. God, all the way back to go all the way forward. The fire of God upon her right now. The fire of God upon her right now. Right now, right now. There's a lady of that row over there. That lady over there. Right here, tell her to open her eyes and lift her hands. Look, look, look at me. That lady there. Yeah, you know, you're pointing at her right there. Yeah, tell her to lift her hands. Open her eyes behind you. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, right now. Open your eyes. The Spirit of God is on you in a powerful way. I see the Lord moving through you like a freight train right now. God, one, two, three. Fire of God upon it. The fire of God upon it. God, baptize or refresh. It's a water to wine moment. There's a name change that God has for you. And it's a restoration of relationship. God, put it on like a glove. The fire of God upon it right now. Give the Lord a clap like He's touching her quickly. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. 
more. Just lift your hands. Give Him glory. Holy Spirit, we give you glory in this place. Oh. Just follow me. I'm just going this way. Fire of God. On the prophet, God, we ask the fire of God on this prophet. 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 I'm just coming this way. Yeah. Keep your hands lifted. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the glory of God. In this section right over here, it's like there's a moving angel of breakthrough right here. God, we ask in Jesus' name, fresh breakthrough. Fresh breakthrough. Fresh breakthrough, God. Fresh breakthrough. Fresh breakthrough. Fresh breakthrough. Fresh breakthrough. Fresh breakthrough. Fresh breakthrough. Oh, I love it, God. I'm coming in. I'm coming in. Fresh breakthrough. Fresh breakthrough. Fresh breakthrough. Fresh breakthrough. Yes. Oh, give the Lord a clap like He's touching these people. Yo. Fire of God in this place. Fire of God in this place. Wow. We gotta go to that section over there. It's just like Disneyland, eh? Yay! Turn to someone next to you and say, I love Jesus. Having so much fun here, my friend. Oh, look at this lady here. She's encountering God. Fire of God upon her. Jesus, we bless what you're already doing inside the depths of her heart. Unlock the water to wine in her. Unlock the water to wine in her. Holy Ghost, stretch your hands out here and say fire on three. One, two, three. Fire, God. Fire of God. Fire of God upon her. Release that prophetic voice that has been placed on her. Where people have said, oh no, that is, you're too spiritual. We break that line, that box right now. We break that line, that box right now. Anoint her, God. A freedom fire, God. A freedom fire, God. Where's Sean? Come here, help me out and pray over here, Sean. Fire of God right here. Oh, I'm going this way. Don't worry, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Everyone in this section, open up your hands. Oh, my friend, how are you? So lovely to see you. Open up your hands, Holy Spirit. I love the left side of the room. Oh, Jesus, I pray that your fire, your grace, and your perfect love would pour out in this place. God, I thank you for a waterfall of your love coming right now. The waterfall of your love, God. The waterfall of your love pouring out over to moments when you when you were younger with your mother. The water to wine, God. Water to wine, God. Water to wine, God. Water to wine, God. Oh, the fire of God in this place. And I see a grace to lead worship. And I see anointing in this house that a sound would come from this house. A worship sound. A worship sound. And songs that would be written from this house. And even amongst this section, there are worshipers. And there's a burning creativity inside of you that you would write, that you would write. Holy Spirit, put it like fire. Put it like fire. Put it like fire, God. Like fire. Oh, let's give the Lord a clap like He's touching a people. Oh, oh, every hand raised in this place. Take it up, Baba. Yeah, take it, take it, take it. Yes. Oh, he's so wonderful. He's so beautiful. Oh, he took a water and he turned it to wine. Yes. He took a grape and he squished it. He squished it. Shit, 
If you sense the presence of God in the room, I want you to wave both hands above your head right now. Keep them waving. And I want you to look around the room. Keep them waving and look around the room. Either you're all crazy, absolutely loco, or this whole thing is real, and there is an open heaven in this place. There is an open heaven in this place. Even the person on your left and right is a crazy person, or God Himself has manifest Himself, which is the glory. And in a place like this, sickness don't dwell. In a place like this, people get set free. And I believe people have, when they have already been set free by the power of God, I believe there's people here, I believe there's people here that they walked in this building with pain. They walked in this building with a lack of mobility and already without us praying, the power of God has touched you just in the presence, just in the presence of the winemaker, just in the presence of God. Suddenly you're like, what just happened to me? What just happened to my, what just happened to my, that they have shoulders here, that there were people here with pain in their shoulders and suddenly you're like, what happened to my shoulder? There were people here with back conditions and suddenly they're like, what, where did all that pain in my back go to? There was a lady in our meeting at last year in Open Heavens when I was preaching. She was paralytic on the left side, 13 years paralytic from an ax, from in being in Iraq in the war. In a moment, God touched her and all the feeling on her left side comes back and she's able to now jump on her left side where she couldn't do that before. Totally healed, I saw her just yesterday. 100% still healed a year later. Wow, turn to someone next to you and say, wow. I want you just by faith right now, turn to someone next to you and say, just by faith. I want you just by faith, just to start testing your body out. We haven't even prayed yet. We haven't even prayed yet for a water to wine moment. Uh, We haven't even prayed yet for a miracle, but just to start testing your body out. And if you came in with pain and now you suddenly start testing out, you're like, what happened? That back pain that was there isn't here. That neck pain that was here isn't here. That that knee that caused was causing pain now suddenly isn't that painful headache that I consistently had now isn't there. I didn't have mobility in this area, but suddenly I do. Just just by faith, start testing it out right now. And when I count to three, if you feel like like 80% better or more, something's happening inside of you and you're like, whoa, the pain feels 80% better or more. Something's happened. When I count to three, I want you to wildly and loudly wave both hands above your head. Does that make sense? If you feel like pain reduction or mobility or something's happening 80% better or more. When I count to three, I want you to wave both your hands above your head. Okay, so, and this, you know what miracles are for? It's just to display that Jesus is alive. It's not so we would have a powerful meeting. I am done with meetings. It is to display that He is Messiah and that a people would turn and say, we choose to believe. The disciples were already believers, but they saw the miracle and they were like, I'm, I believe. So one, and you're gonna wave both hands above your head if you're 80% better more. One, two, and three. Wave both hands right now. Keep waving them. Keep waving them. Go like this. Keep waving them. Keep waving them. Look around the room. Isn't that amazing? Look at that. Wow. Wow. Give the Lord a clap right now like He's touching people. God. Okay, if you waved your hands, 
I want you to come quickly over here because A, you're going to be part of my ministry team and B, I want to hear what happened to you. So come very quickly over here. If you're waving your hands both above your head, come right over there very quickly, very quickly. This is uh, exciting. Yes, God. Okay, come over there. If you wave both your hands right over there, you're going to be part of my ministry team. Turn to someone next to you and say, we haven't even prayed yet. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Absolutely wonderful. Okay, you're going to be part of my ministry team, but I need to hear what happened. So uh, uh, why don't you help come up over here? Tell me, tell me what happened. Just a few of you. Come, all of you, why not? All of you, why don't you come over here? Come over here. Come. And what I need you to do is, you know, a lot of people say that Jesus never did any miracles the same in the Bible. They was always unique, so there wasn't a pattern to follow. But what I need you to do is realize there was one miracle that was done the same twice in the Bible. It was the feeding of the 5,000, the feeding of the 4,000. They gave thanks, and there was multiplication that started to happen. I'm not doing this for a good meeting. I am accessing the realm of heaven through your cheers and celebration and sound. So if you hear of a pinky toe getting 80% better, I need you to jump up and down and go wild as if there is a realm of the 5,000 opening up. Does that make sense? It's the little loaves and fishes that were celebrated of a child, but it's if we become like children, we enter into the heavens. And so I need you to become like children and be like, oh my love, you have been faithful. Just like scream, I love it. <laughs> Turn someone next to you and say, you're a childish grape. Okay, so tell us, and someone's gonna squish you. Tell us. Okay, now you're going to tell, tell the people yeah, yeah. just 30 seconds. Okay, I've had a little bit of arthritis in my body, nice lot, especially nice here, and it's just warm and gone. So happen. you had arthritis in your body over here and here, and you're in pain, hurting when you came in, and it's 80% better. Someone just come behind her right now. Holy Spirit, close your eyes. Oh, cheer like a little child fire of God upon her right now. The glory of God moving upon her. We saw arthritic pain relieved right now. If you have arthritic pain, put your hand where the pain is. God, we ask that a fire would come upon that place right now. A fire would come upon that place right now. In Jesus' name, stay with her. Where's Sean and um, Topher? Can you tell your, your interns to come up here? Yeah, tell us 30 seconds. Uh, both of my shoulders are pretty much shot. I am in a PT program right now, prescribed by my doctor, because I can't do this. What? Siri, what? today I was in PT for this. Hold on. So, so he, he couldn't do that, and now he can do that. Oh, whoa, whoa, hold on. So you couldn't do this? I couldn't go that way. You couldn't do that way. No, I couldn't build it like this. You couldn't do that? Yeah. It and hurt. You couldn't do this yet? No, it hurt terribly, really. Okay. It was bad. And do it again. Like this? Yeah. Give the Lord a clap right now. Oh, this is my ministry team. This is my ministry team because you know why I'm doing this? It's because if God's done it in you, He wants to do it through you. God chose Israel, but He didn't just choose Israel. He chose Israel so all the nations could be blessed. Oh, okay, you're part of my ministry team. Tell us, tell us, what's your name? I'm Jessica. Jessica. Um, so for the past couple of weeks, um, my left shoulder has been hurting. Just even during worship, I was having struggles, like lifting it up because it just hurts. And then out of nowhere, it just disappears. And okay. now I'm just speechless. Oh, and all the pain's gone. All the pain's gone. Okay. All the pain is gone. I've been su suffering for weeks. I couldn't sleep on this side. Come on, my beautiful grapes. Come on, my grapes. Do something that before it would cause pain, but now there's no pain. <laughs> wow. This is a moment right here. Come on, my grapes. Give it a little... <laughs> 
Jessica, this is a moment. Holy Spirit, this is a moment. Stretch your hands out. I see the Lord doing something with your mother. I see your mother getting brought to tears and touched by God. She was a quiet woman, but God's always made her a powerful woman. And God said over you, there is a powerful prophetic anointing on your life and your voice is to be heard, not quieted. Your voice is to be heard and not quieted. Church, join with me, just clap. We loose her right now. We loose her voice in the spirit. We loose her right now. Oh, woman, be loosed. A release of the prophetic authority on her life, God. Oh, let me tell you, you want to be prayed for by her because what God did in her, He wants to do through her. Turn someone next to you and say, I like Jessica. Come over here. Yeah, yeah. And where's my team? Come and pray for Jessica if you can. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, contusion in my uh, lower back and up my shoulder. And I just said, Jesus, I just want to give you my water and I'll receive your wine and the pain's gone. All, all the pain's gone. What, explain to people what a contusion is, because maybe I'm South African, but I don't know what a contusion is. It's an inflammation and may, maybe a micro tear that's okay. there and in the muscle. And you're in consistent pain? Uh, yeah, it's all, always been, always there. And now there's no... And the shoulder and the neck. So can you do something that before when you did that, you would have pain, but now you don't have pain? Look at that. Give the Lord a clap, my grapes. My wonderful bunch of grapes. Darren, we're going to squish all these grapes very soon. Isn't she so wonderful? Can, can you go and pray with her? Just sit with her? You're going to be part of my ministry team. Yes, my beautiful friend. Isn't she just the best? She's like a mom to me. I love her. I um, strained my hip hiking with my grandkids, and it was like in, inflamed and really painful. It's gone. All gone. Gone. All gone. Gone. Can you do something that would cause you pain? Whoa, there we go. Come on, grandmother. That's a granny right there. I told you I have a ministry to grannies. <laughs> Someone else, come up quickly. Yes. Oh, no, Nadia, right? Oh, guys, stretch your hands out to Nadia. This is a day for you, eh? I love your eyes are so small because of your tears. God is just upon you, Nadia. I love it. And you Slavic. I love the Slavics. Love them. Yeah, tell us 30 seconds. What happened? About uh, three or four weeks ago, my pinky toe, when you were mentioning it. It's the pinky toe. I told you. It was the pinky toe. This is going to test my grape celebration capacity. So it was really hurting, like every time I touch it, or I, I didn't know why it was bothering me. It was just sharp pain was coming out of the toe. And when you start saying, I'm like, let me keep checking. I still hurts. And then it's like, no, it's not hurting. Oh, no. Come on, grapes. Come on, my childish grapes. <laughs> That's amazing, Nadia. You're part of my ministry team tonight, okay? Someone else. Yeah, yeah I saw you. Wow, man, you look awesome. You look like you got a story. Wow, you look awesome. I love all your tattoos. Man, you're a cool dude. And this beard right here. Man, I like you. What's your name? I'm Dave. Dave, 30 seconds. Tell us what happened. Uh, uh, my shoulders are hurting so bad, I, was, I almost had to leave a couple times during the... Uh, and it's just... I got no shoulder pain. It's, it's gone. No shoulder pain. It's gone. You, you had so much pain, you were going to leave twice and do something now that if you did this before, you'll get in pain. Do, do. Yeah, I couldn't bear it. It was bad. You couldn't bear doing this. Yeah, it was. Give the Lord a big clap. That's amazing. Man. God, I thank you for Dave. Dave, you're supposed to be here tonight. God is writing a story with you. I see a story of redemption and I see God using you powerfully and I want to say publicly there is a call to ministry upon your life. There is a call of ministry on your life and many will be set free because of the story that you tell. Many will be set free because of the story that you tell and God has a testimony that you need to share and it's a signs and wonders testimony. People would not believe that Dave was that way and now he is this way. God, we bless this mighty man in Jesus' name. Wow, give him a clap right now. 
I like you, Dave. Dave, what am I, team? Can you come just pray with Dave? Dave, you're part of my ministry team. Someone else. We didn't even pray for anyone. Oh, open your hands. Holy Spirit. Come behind her, behind her. Keep her, hold her up, hold her up. Holy Spirit, this is a moment. This is a moment. Stretch your hands or open your hands. Oh, I feel it. It's like a wake. It's not just a manifestation. There's an awakening of a gift inside of you. Holy Spirit. Wow. Feels like it's emanating from you. It's more than a manifestation. It's like an impartation of grace for the miraculous coming upon you. Holy Spirit, a signs and wonders grace to rest on her. That these hands would see healing. I see even in your profession, you would call yourself almost like a healer. In your profession, you would take people and you would take them from where they were broken and you would take them to a place of being whole. And I see the Lord using you in the miraculous in that area. God bless her right now. Okay, you keep crying, we'll come back to you. Come on, my grapes, give them a round, give her a round of applause. Someone else? Is that it? Someone else? Why don't you just check your bodies again right now? If you're standing here, you've just listened to a set of testimonies. We've just celebrated like a bunch of grapes jumping up and down, about to get squashed. And uh, why don't you just test your body out? Maybe where you had movement before or there was no feeling in a certain area, suddenly there's feeling coming back. And if you have, if, if I'm gonna count to three and if you're like, whoa, I feel like something's happening inside of me, 80% or more, I want you to just wave your hands and then I want you just to come up front just to testify and be part of my ministry team. Okay, so one, two, you're gonna wave both hands above your head if suddenly you've tested again. And three, wave them both now. Is there someone here? Wow, come up here, come up here. Come up here. Oh, you can stay there if you can't come up, but I'm, I wanna come up if you can. Oh, wow, and you. Okay, and then we're gonna pray for her. Okay, tell us what happened. Give the Lord a clap, my grapes. It's 10 o'clock. God, something's happening over here, this lady. Something's happening right now. This lady in a wheelchair, something's happening with her. The fire of God is upon you. The fire of God is upon her. Stretch your hands out right now. Holy Spirit, we ask that your glory would rest upon her. The fire of God. God, would you baptize her afresh with your fire? God, ask for the lightnings of heaven to come upon her. And I speak that there is a prophetic gift on your life that is to be awoken. God, I speak to her lungs and I speak to her vocal cords. And I say, increase the volume of the sound that would come from her, God. A prophetic mantle of grace to come upon her. The fire of God. Lisa, put your hand just on her neck, just gently. Holy Spirit. And where there has been fear, we break it off right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for a spirit of freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And the truth will set you free, God. We thank you for spirit and truth that I share. A spirit of worship of spirit and in truth that will release freedom, God. Freedom, God, freedom, God, freedom, God, freedom, God, freedom, God. I see the age 13 and the age 17, and I see as trauma entered your world, I see God saying, watch as I shake the tree of trauma and set you free. Holy Spirit, I thank you, God, that you would anoint her with an oil of gladness and joy and the fire of God to come upon her right now. The fire of God to come upon her right now. I speak to every joint. I speak to every joint, every ligament. And I declare, Jesus, would you come in? Where they've been declared disease, we declare them whole. I speak to every joint and every ligament. Where the doctors have said, oh no, your ligaments and your joints are cursed. We declare in Jesus' name that you would bless her right now, God. I declare full mobility and the fire of God on her hips especially where there's been an attack even on the hip area and the abdominal area. I declare in Jesus' name the fire of God to come upon it. The fire of God to come upon it. The fire of God to come upon it. The lightnings of heaven to touch her right now, God. Holy Spirit, give the Lord a clap. He's doing something here. Yeah. More than a touch, God. More than a touch, God. Oh, water to one. Water to one. Water to one. Oh, Jesus, bless this queen. What's your name? Christina. 
Hey everyone, this is Christina. She's a wonderful grape. God, would you squish this grape in your glory? God, turn this one into a mighty wine moment. I declare, Lord, there's a prophetic voice that she's to prophesy. She's to minister. There's a leadership call and a prophetic voice that needs to be led out. I speak over her lungs and her vocal cords. God, to increase, to increase, to increase, to increase, to increase. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Something's happening right now. Just keep your eyes closed, but do you sense the Lord on you right now? Oh, thank you, God. God, we thank you. This isn't just a feeling. This is your presence. This is not just a feeling, she's saying. This is your presence, God. Holy Spirit. Oh, de, 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 de. Oh, say that again. My legs feel like they're coming back to life. <laughs> Just say that, say that nice and loud. My legs feel like they're coming back to life. She said her legs feel like they're coming back to life. Her legs feel like they're coming back to. I can speak. I can speak. What, what do you mean? You, what do you mean you could you couldn't speak? I had no air or energy to speak. I you had no air or energy to speak, and I was praying over your lungs and your throat. And For at least five years, I haven't been able to speak. I've had a hard time breathing. And the hip also uh, was deteriorating, uh, okay. causing excruciating pain, but I, I feel different now. I'm a little shaky, <laughs> but it's like the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Is there someone here that has known her for a period of time? Yeah, come here, you're crying. Can your dad come up here quickly? But you've known her for six months? So, so you hear because you heard Lisa's testimony, Alyssa's testimony, and then he and said you need home in about five years. And you haven't left home in five years. Wow. The first time in a very long time, you haven't left home in five years, and you hear here today. Well, I'm in the room in the hospital in the doctor's office. I said I haven't left home other than the emergency room or the doctor's office. But Come on, my grapes. You've got to give the Lord a clap. She, she hasn't left home. She, she hasn't left home other than the emergency room or the doctor's office. This is her first time here because she heard the story of a sign and a wonder. And she's saying, I feel life coming back to my legs. And I can speak differently I can speak now I can speak now I couldn't speak I, I said um, if Richie ever comes to SRC I'm there and so <laughs> I happened to uh, see that you were going to be here tonight wow. and I I just knew I was supposed to come well, you can speak really well I know. <laughs> look good. you're even speaking on a microphone I know. <laughs> <laughs> tell us so you met her six months ago tell, because we don't know the story, and then I might pass it to her dad, but tell us, to just tell us in 30 seconds, like, what this means. Oh, you know, it's just so amazing. I mean, I just watch her every day suffer so much, but no more suffering. Yes. No, it's totally significant. The thing is, is that um, she has, has had advanced Lyme disease and deteriorated in her nervous system to where um, the fight, flight, or freeze mechanism was just constant. I mean, uh, she could sit up for an hour and a half or so, but then she'd have to lay flat on her back to recharge her energy, to have breath. She couldn't have conversations. She would lose energy just thinking about things. <laughs> you say that again? I couldn't even pray. It was uh, too exhausting, but I, I've been in bed quite a bit the past few years you look great for being in bed you look so beautiful you have the most beautiful skin you just look so beautiful wow and look at you even the thought of of getting up or having a conversation or praying would make you too fatigued yeah no no way yeah no way you are a sign and a wonder that's right amen you are a sign and a wonder while we were standing here and praying for you, the power of God was on you. You were shaking under the power of God. What was that feeling like? Like breath, like life. Um, just the encounter with the Lord that I came for. I came to encounter Him. 
Why don't everyone just lift your hands and give Jesus glory? Oh, Jesus, we give you glory. Oh, we give you glory right now. God, I don't know what I'm doing. We don't know what you're doing, but there's a woman here that hasn't left the house to go anywhere but the ER room and the doctor, and she's standing here with us. Jesus in your midst, and she's saying, my legs feel like there's life in them again. My voice, I feel like I can talk again. I feel like I can pray again. Oh God, I never want to get bored of you, Jesus. You are so wonderful. You are the Messiah. You are the resurrected one. You are alive, my King. You're not dead. It's not fiction. It's not fiction. It is fact. He is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And His hands, there are holes. And in His side, there is a hole. And He dwells within me. And He dwells within this woman. The resurrected life of Jesus is here. Oh, God, we give you glory, God. Wow, the fire. I feel so much fire. I know this is your dad. I know you probably came here to protect her, to cover her. But just tell us what this means to you. You have no idea what this means to me. I've watched her deteriorate for seven years, get worse and worse and worse. So she can't hardly talk and she can't walk anymore. But to have her come tonight, you have no idea what, what God is doing in my life as I watch her being healed. We've prayed for this so much, so much. God is great. God is good. Praise God. Praise God. Tina, I love you. Did you hear that? That's a dad talking about her daughter. I've got a little girl. She's two years old. Oh, God, we thank you for this daughter. God, we just, this is a party. Where's Topher? Topher, get on the DJ. Get on the DJ right now. There's a party waiting to happen here. Oh, this is a party waiting to happen. Topher, get on that DJ board right now. Holy Spirit, we just give you glory. Oh, we give you so much glory. We give you so much glory. Someone keep clapping. We give you glory, God. Um, it was just like Yeshua just walked into me and the anointing broke the yoke because I felt like I was being crushed to death all the time but it's, it's just getting lighter and lighter and I can breathe more and more and I can talk more and more and my legs feel energized I'm, I'm not sure what's going on but it's, it's God yeah. wow I was supposed to be here tonight you were supposed to be here tonight I know you said you haven't prayed I feel like you should pray over yeah. all of us yeah. And pray nice and loud. Everyone needs to hear this is what God has done in her, He's gonna do through her. Put your hand on anywhere where there's pain. Put your hand on anywhere where the doctor said this will not recover. Put your hand anywhere if it's on the abdominal, if it's a reproductive issue, if it's your neck, your back, your knees. This woman's going to pray. She hasn't prayed publicly in probably five plus years. This is a moment. This is a water to wine moment. This is a revealing moment for her destiny as a minister. As a minister. Put your hands somewhere where you need healing. Thank you, Father God. We just come boldly before your throne of grace, Lord. I thank you that you are the God who gives life to the dead. And you call forth those things that are not as though they are. So Father, in your presence, I just call forth life, Father, in every cell, in every body, Lord, in every life. I call forth resurrection life. Thank you, Father, for your power. It's your power, it's your presence, it's your face, it's your breath, it's your life, God. It's your calling, it's your destiny. Thank you, Father, for resurrection life. We just thank you for your resurrection life. Yeshua, you are the resurrection and the life. And we just receive you, Father, and Jesus and Holy Spirit into our spirit, souls, and bodies to make us whole again. Thank you, Father. Heal your body. Heal your body. Heal your body. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Give this minister a massive round of applause. Wow. And if you if you suddenly like while she was praying, you felt a heat come upon you, 
and you just felt God moving. There was like a heat that suddenly came upon you. I want you to rush forward as quickly as you can. While you were praying, she was praying, you felt heat come upon you. I want you to rush forward as quickly as you can, just over here. And we want to pray again for you. Just come quickly forward, quickly over here. Give the Lord another clap here. This is crazy. This is a moment right here. Okay? My word. And we haven't even really got to praying for people yet. You did all the praying. Darren, this is a place of signs and wonders. I can't five years. Five years you haven't come to a place like this, a crowd like this. You look so beautiful for not leaving the house in five years. You look gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Wow. Say that, say that, say that. I've known her for probably over 20 years, and I um, knew her when she was beautiful and young and vibrant, and um, watched the disease just destroy and take life. And um, she's been stuck at home and um, needing full-time care and couldn't even function or think or talk. And it's, um, um, I'm friends with Alyssa. And we were, I said, Alyssa, please pray. Because um, I got a couple friends that really need your touch tonight. And um, just amazing to see God touch you and, and, and the transformation even just tonight. Just like, so is praise that, the Lord. Is this, this is significant. Huge, huge, huge. Like, <laughs> bigger than Alyssa. Bigger than Alyssa. <laughs> wow. Oh, Jesus, we give you all the glory, God. This, we give you all the glory. Just lift your voices, church. We give you all the glory, God. We give you all the glory. Oh, sing that with me. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Yes, it's Christmas time, my grapes. You all the glory, cry the Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you. Christ the Lord. Wow. Wow. If you were healed tonight, you're going to be my ministry team. This lady over here, I never got to hear your testimony. Just come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly, quickly. What, 30 seconds. What happened? Yeah. Um, 13 years, I, I had very, very hard life. Many people had hard life, but I had my hard Just life. 30. Okay, and um, last year God completely changed my life and I had deep pain uh, like in chest and uh, middle back all the time. And this time it happened I'm like a boom, and it just was gone. All gone. Yeah. All the gone. Yeah. All gone. Give the Lord a clap right now. There was pain, pain that came through trauma. Pain that came through trauma and God set her free of the pain that came through trauma. Oh, and look at you, your eyes are filled with tears. I love that, you're so wonderful. It was right over there, you were the lady that was shouting so loudly. Yes. That was you, hey. Don't be embarrassed, that's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. God was setting you free of trauma in that moment there. As you started to shout, that what was tightened up wrapped up in your heart that was held there, it was getting released in that moment. And as it popped, the pain in the back and the pain over here, just, it just went, is that right? Yeah. All went. It was like <laughs> I heard it. Wow, I heard it. Come on, my grapes, give me a big round of applause. Okay, are you gonna be ready? Are you ready? Are you okay, this is what we're gonna do. If you got miraculously healed, I want you to go over there, okay? All the guys that got healed, go over there, because you're my ministry team. Right over there, that's my ministry team there. If, if we didn't get to you, and we didn't get to pray for you, but you have faith, this lady just got miraculously touched by God. That's, that is a miracle. That is a miracle. Look at her walking over there. That's a miracle. That right there is a miracle. 
You heard the lady, 22 years, has known her, said this is a miracle. I, I, I don't know if it's true, but the lady said, I've known her for 22 years. This is even greater than what happened to Alyssa right over there. This is a miracle. This is a miracle, Racha. Jesus is alive. The king is not dead. He is the son of God. The son of God. I believe that God is doing things like this at the moment of a water to wine moment of the change of a church because he's prophesying the origin stories of Eden. The origin stories of this church, Eden, would be that, that people would come in wheelchairs and they would walk out healed and whole. That people would come with trauma and they would set, get set free through a scream and then a release in their body. That people without even hands laid upon would get healed because they would come to an Eden. They would come to an Eden and there would be this in-between space between heaven and between earth, a place where God, Jesus himself would dwell, where he was in one place but he was in another and he would bring a heaven into earth and disease would get healed. If you need a miracle in your body, we just had a bunch of people that God touched. And I have faith that if God, there, yeah, come over, go over there, go over there. If God does it in one, he wants to do it in many. So you're going to be part of their story of, you know, Alyssa who got healed over there? She's been moving around with me, praying and traveling. She's seen over 40 creative miracles. She's, because God, what God did in her over there, he's doing now through her. She's seen 40 creative miracles. Just wild. If I can get some ushers just to facilitate uh, some of the healing team. If you're part of my healing team, people that just got healed, raise your hand. Okay, you're going to come all the way against the wall, all the way against the wall, all the way against the wall, against the wall. Yeah. Okay, now put your hands up if you just got healed. Okay, put your hands up to, to all of them. Okay, that's the ministry team. If you need healing in your body, I want you to go to them and ask them to lay their hand upon you and for them to say, Jesus, 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 and whatever else they want to say. Is that okay? Okay. By faith, I want you to come quickly and ask for healing. And then we're going to have a party, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a fire tunnel here, because again, an origin story of Eden, this is going to be a drunken mess of a church in the best way, where there's going to be a bunch of grapes that come here and they get squished into wine. You're going to walk in, you're going to get harvest, grapes are going to get harvest, they're going to turn into wine. So I don't know how you're going to do this, Darren, but I need a few people to make a fire tunnel. And then, uh, because we want to honor what's happening over there, we want to honor what God's doing amongst this beautiful woman over here. Wasn't that, isn't that amazing? Isn't Jesus just the best? Jesus is the best. The absolute best. And I'm going to jump down. I'm going to. And then help me out, Brad. Which way is the beginning and which way is the end? Which is the <laughs> Which is the start and which is the... In a moment, the music is going to get loud and I'm going to jump into this fire tunnel so I probably won't get to say goodbye to all of you. But I want to thank you. What a privilege to be part of the first moment at Eden. What an absolute honor. This is my family. And these are not just... This, isn't, this is our victories together. These are the origin stories of what God is writing in the story of Eden, the church. This church, Eden, these are origin stories of miracles, signs, and wonder. Water to wine, grapes that get squished. This is the moment. Turn to someone next to you and say, I love this place. If you're part of the prayer ministry team, can you get up here real quick and we'll, we'll get this fire tunnel a little longer. All right, if you want to just line up uh, down on this side here, just make a single file line. Okay. Yeah, we're good. You, you good? All right, let's go. Flame them. Flame them.